Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. As mentioned, today we're going to be checking out how to make your video footage more cinematic. So if you've been following me and subscribed to my channel for quite a while now, you would know that I've been doing YouTube for just over two years. And in that time, I think I've built up my skills of how to take decent enough cinematic footage and how to put that together in editing as well. So today I'm just going to give you my tips and tricks on how to do so and my advice to beginners in achieving that cinematic look on film. So in the planning of this video, I've broken it down into two different categories and that can be placed in shooting and editing. So when it comes to shooting your video, I think one of the most important things when it comes to getting cinematic footage is having stable footage. And this can be done by having a stabilizer or just doing it handheld as well. When I started out, I did handheld for about literally two years. I only got a stabilizer about two months ago, I would say, and it hasn't really made that much of a difference. A lot of the stuff I do can be shot handheld as well. When I did start out, I was pretty shaky with the cameras, and if you go watch my first vlogs, you can see that as well. But as I said in this video, I'm just gonna be showing you some tips and tricks as well that can help you stabilize your handheld footage as well. I might even make a separate video on that too, so just stay tuned for that. In saying that, the stabilizer does help quite a bit. Obviously, you don't need to worry about shaking your hand too much because the stabilizer does that for you. So the stabilizer that I have is called Design Crane. It is the first edition of that. Um, I picked it up for pretty cheap because the new one just came out. So if you are looking for a stabilizer, I would highly recommend that one. It's really quick and easy to set up. But as I said, for the beginners out there, you really don't need it. You can do it all handheld. It just takes some practice getting used to it. And in saying that, if you're going to be doing it handheld, as well as on a stabilizer, I highly suggest shooting in slow-mo. Whether your camera can shoot at 60 frames a second or, like mine can now, 120 frames per second, obviously the more money you're going to be spending on your camera, the more frame rate you'll probably have. So, I use 60 frames a second for the past two years on my Canon 70D and it's been absolutely fine. It took me to some of the most amazing places in the world and got me some of the biggest jobs that I've ever got. So. You can do it with only a 70D. I have done it. I went to Santorini with Red Bull and it was truly amazing. So you can do that all handheld. There's no problem in doing so. So that is tip number one is have your footage stabilized. I think that's one of the most important things. Like I said, I'll get into the editing and show you how to make it even more stable later on. My next tip for getting nice cinematic footage is always focus on your lighting and this can be done in broad daylight as well, but just make sure that you have really interesting, nice, contrasty lighting in a way but I think the most important and the best time to shoot cinematic footage is in the golden hour and if you're watching this and you're brand new to video and photography you've probably heard of it but the golden hour is basically half an hour before sunset and half an hour after sunset or sunrise so that hour in which the sun is just above or just below the horizon provides the best lighting situation for your subjects. The light is really nice, first of all. It creates a nice cinematic mood with different lens flares and soft shadows so that you can grade it nicely in editing as well. Definitely go ahead and shoot in golden hour. It'll just make your footage look so much better, I promise you. And then my last tip for the physical shooting of cinematics is try and look for depth of field in your shots. I try to do this quite a lot where I'll often reveal a background by coming around a foreground if that makes sense so if I have a foreground object and then I have the background which is the main focus I'll just come out from the foreground object so it creates a bit of a bokeh and blur in the foreground and just adds that extra depth of field creating a bit more interest to the shot so I would say look out for depth of field if you have multiple layers in your image it just makes it a lot more interesting to look at and then speaking of bokeh fairy lights different neon lights all different kinds of lights can really make your footage stand out and pop so play around with lighting whether it's to use it for bokeh and depth of field or just to light your subject in really interesting ways that can all be experimental and up to your personal visual style and taste so those are my three tips for actually shooting cinematics uh, I'm gonna jump onto my computer and show you guys how I go ahead and edit those cinematic sequences okay so now assuming that you have recorded all of your footage and it looks nice and cinematic in camera we're gonna jump into Premiere Pro this is my chosen editing platform so just for this video I'm gonna use a few of my New York clips that I've selected just to show you as an example so just starting out obviously you would import these video clips into your project and put them out on your timeline so these are all just standard without any editing on them at the moment just really plain and simple clips so just getting straight into how to make it a bit more cinematic as I said I like to use slow-mo in a lot of my videos and I'm sure a lot of you 
have seen that as well. This was one of the intro clips for my latest New York videos. If we go over to the metadata, we can see that this was shot at 60 frames a second. So when you shoot at 60 frames a second, the slowest you can slow it down to without it like lagging is 40%. So I always put in 40%. And then if we go to the beginning, we can see it's nice and smooth and in slow-mo. And just the very fact that you make it slow-mo already smooths down the footage quite a bit. So you get rid of all that shaking, which is great. So I'm just gonna cut it right there. And then you can go ahead and do this for all of the other clips as well. We're also just gonna bring in a nice cinematic song. I downloaded a few yesterday. So just gonna bring this into here just to add a bit of music to this thing. So I'm gonna start off with the main shot of the New York skyline in the beginning. And we have that nice and slow-mo. I'm gonna go to my effects as well and just drag a cross dissolve over that just to fade it in really nicely. And then, like I said as well, I'm just gonna slow down all of the other clips as well. So just click on speed duration and make them all on 40%. I think all of these are shot at 60 frames a second. So you can do that for all of them, put them in a sequence. And as you can see, we already have it looking nice and cinematic. You want to just time your stuff to the music as well because it makes it a bit better. And you can just mess around and cut and paste that wherever you would like. The next thing we're going to do is bring over the cinematic bars. Now this is just like a PNG that I downloaded from Google of two black cinematic bars. So just literally type in on Google images cinematic bars PNG and just drag that over your footage and you have that nice letterbox cinematic look going on your footage. The next thing we need to do is bring on an adjustment layer to our footage so that we can color grade it. So you just click on new item up here in your project, click on adjustment layer, click OK, and there you'll have your brand new adjustment layer. And then just drag this, like the cinematic bars as well, over your footage all the way across so that the same color grade can apply to everything. So from this, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly edit all of this into a cohesive, nice looking timeline. I'll just speed it up so you can kind of see what I'm still doing. Really just going to make them slow-mo and cut them into the right place. Okay, so now that we have our cinematic nicely cut and in a cohesive sequence, we can start color grading this. Obviously, as you can see, everything is just in slow-mo. It was all shot at 60 frames a second and they're all at 40% now. So just one example that I wanted to show you where it's a bit wonky, the footage. So obviously my handheld stabilization wasn't the best on this clip. So you can see it's shaking just a bit. So what I usually like to do is apply a warp stabilizer to it. But if we go ahead and drag the warp stabilizer over on this, it's gonna give you this error message. So how do we get around this? We can't do this now. So just press undo. What you have to do is right click on it, press nest, just hit okay for your nest sequence. And then you drag the warp stabilizer onto that. So then this footage will stabilize. So now you have two layers, I guess, of stabilization on your footage. You have the slow-mo as well as the warp stabilizer. So with having both of those, it's pretty difficult to get it not stabilized. Unless you are just really super shaky with your footage, then it'll be unable to stabilize. So once that's all finished up, it shouldn't take too long. You should have super slow-mo, super stable footage without any shaking in it. So that's basically how to get super stable slow-mo cinematic footage without having a stabilizer or fancy cameras or anything. Next, I'm gonna go onto the adjustment layer and this is where we are gonna apply our color grading and make it actually look a bit more cinematic. So you're gonna go to window, go to workspaces and then go to the color workspace. And on the right here, you're gonna see a pretty similar setup to what Lightroom has. So you can adjust all these settings according to the look that you wanna go for in your video. What I'm gonna to do to start off though is go to the creative section and then go to look. And here they have a whole bunch of different looks to their footage. Um, I don't really like the Premiere Pro looks to be honest. The film ones aren't too bad, but some of them are just a bit too much and I'm not really a fan. But for example, if we look at the preview of this Fuji F125, we can go ahead and apply that to it. So just go and click on that LUT and you'll see it'll apply to the adjustment layer so that it'll affect all the footage underneath it. So if we play this from the start, hopefully it works on all of the other footage. Let's see if it does. See, in my opinion, this is just a bit too contrasty for me, but we can go into the basic corrections and just bring down that contrast as well. So it's really not that difficult to adjust these settings. And if you know anything about Lightroom editing, it's pretty easy to do this stuff as well. So it's really as simple as that. It's so easy to make nice cinematic footage with good color grading so that you can get your films out there and 
the world appreciating how cool your videos look. <laughs> so like I said, Premiere Pro does provide you with quite a lot of different looks. As I said, I'm not a fan of most of them. So what you can do as well is click on browse. And if you have a whole bunch of your own LUTs where I do have a video on how to create your own LUTs or you can buy or download LUTs from the internet, then all you have to do is click on browse and go to these different LUTs. I use this one for my New York video. So just click on that and then it will apply that LUT to your videos. And there we go, again, really as simple as that. So there we go, those are my tips and tricks for shooting and editing to make your video footage look more cinematic. I really hope this video has helped you guys. If you did like it, please leave a like. If you are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Also, if you haven't followed my Instagram yet, please go check it out, it is at Visual Rev as well. All of your support is highly appreciated and again, I really hope that I could help you guys in this video. I also have tons of other editing tutorials on photo and Instagram and YouTube and video editing, so please go check that out on my channel if you are interested for more tips and tricks. In the meantime though, stay weird, don't die, and make it happen. I'll see you guys in the next one.